Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to our um, first vlogcast. And uh, this is in a series on uh, Joey's in Conversation. And our guest this morning is former pre iva at uh, Joey's Primary School. And at the end of his retirement, he contemplated golfing or gardening and chose to go to Africa. So welcome this morning to Porika Fanin. Thank you for taking the time to join us on our first vlogcast. Well, Father Don, thanks for the invitation. It's an honour and a privilege to be your first guest on this uh, ground. Our guinea pig, thank you very much. Guinea pig, yeah, exactly. Hope it works out, no problem. So, to get in a bit of an insight into you and what makes you tick, maybe you could um, tell us a little bit about your early years, where you grew up, and uh, did that form your, your interest in education? Well, wow, there's a deep one. Okay, a little bit of background on me. Okay, I was born in Waterford. I went to school in Mount Sinai, which is uh, the very first Christian Brothers school, uh, founded by Edmund Rice, who later went on to found Joey's. But anyway, uh, so born in Waterford, grew up in Waterford, went to, uh, left Waterford in, God, 1974, the tender age of 16, I think, went to uh, St. Pat's in Drumcondra, qualified there, and on the 1st of July, 1977, I was lucky enough to uh, start working Joey's. 1st of July, 1977. So, yeah, my, my upbringing did, 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 did kind of uh, shape me, I suppose, obviously. And uh, I always wanted to be a teacher um, since I was in about fourth class. And the reason, wow. the reason for that was when I was in fourth class in school all those years ago, that was about 1967, I'd say, uh, we had a very kind of a nasty kind of a teacher who made life a misery for an awful lot of pupils. And I said, I want to be a teacher and I want to be, have uh, kids who are happy and glad to be in school. That's a, a weird thing to say, but that's what the, the, the spark was that started it off. So I say I went to Pat's, qualified there, went to the Joey's, 1st of July, 1977, and I stayed there for 36 happy years. I'm going to say long and happy years, but you might get the wrong impression of that. So 36 years. <laughs> so I'm, I'm conscious that, uh, that it's the Joey's Pat Troopers we're talking to here, so they might think they spent a long time in Joey's, but I spent a hell of a lot longer in Joey's than they did. <laughs> okay. So, Porik, you were telling us that you, you joined Joey's in 1977, Seven. That's right. Um, just down the road from where you had been training, and you'd wanted to be a teacher since the early years, from from the age right. of fourteen, four, fourteen. Oh, before that, primary school age, yeah. Primary school age. So, tell us a little bit of your time in Joey's. Is very interesting. You were very much. I mean, Joey's has has a, a reputation of being ahead of the posse in very many areas. But your time in Joey's was very interesting. You started the Asperger's unit, essentially. Yeah, okay. I started in Joey's in 77. Joey's in those days was a, a, a different place, I suppose. Um, in 1977, 78, that, those kind of years, the clientele from Joey's came from far and wide, from Malahide, Port Marnock, uh, some even swords. Rahini, Dunamid, there was even a bus coming in from Dunamid with pupils. That was the, that was the, the demographic profile in, the, in those days, uh, with a few from around the school and a few then from in towards uh, East Wall and North Strand and that. That changed over the years uh, as schools are built in there. For instance, Beaumont was a huge catchment area for Joey's when I started, Elmont, but as schools are built there, like St. Fiacris and so on, that dried up. So there was a big change there, all right. The numbers in the schools started to drop, um, and just pure, pure coincidence, I suppose, in the year 1999, I think, I was at a hurling match where I spent a lot of my time, and there was a, a lady came along, tapped me on the shoulder, and he says, uh, you're in Joey's, aren't you? Yeah, you've got, uh, you've got empty classrooms down there, which we had at that stage. He said, would you like to fill them up with uh, Asperger's? Would you like to go into special education? And I said, yeah, well, I took it to the, a very great Christian brother who was the chairman of the board at the time, uh, Brought on Morocco, BC O Morocco, spent many years in O'Connell's, but he was chairman of the Joey's board. And I said, I'm thinking of going special ed. And he says, that's what we're here for. Let's do it. So we, uh, in 2000, we started the first as specific classes for Asperger's in the country. Uh, there was an enormous success, great success for the school, but a great success also for those kids who were involved. 
uh, who have gone through the primary and subsequently the secondary school since and uh, have uh, come out the far end. Many have gone to college and qualified. So a, a huge success story. That was one of the big changes in Joey's over the years. Absolutely, yeah, the special ed. Uh, starting with the autism or Asperger's unit, that also opened the doors for other special needs kids. So we have Down syndrome kids, Prader Willis kids, you know. So definitely a, a huge change. But uh, as, as was said, that's what we're there for, to look after the, the marginalised and the downtrodden or whatever. So it was great. And that then progressed into the secondary school where now there's nearly 40% of the students are um, special needs students, Asperger's, etc. So it has really has developed since then. I didn't realise it was that high, but yeah, yeah absolutely. The, 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 the secondary school and the primary school have always worked hand in hand. And obviously if we had in the primary school special needs pupils, the question was going to arise, where were they going to go? So we went and approached the secondary school, uh, Brian Edouard as principal, Jerry Cullen as principal, and they, they all embraced it, and it's gone on. It's been a great success for a secondary school as well. But I mean, you, a lot of your your, your viewers or listeners there might realise that for a, a long time, relations between primary and secondary school were very strained uh, in, when I started. Uh, the reason was the success of both. Uh, the success was actually a, a problem. Uh, the primary school attracted large numbers. Uh, and all the kids who qualified from the primary school, who graduated from the primary school, wanted to go to the secondary school, and the secondary school didn't have room for them. So we had, uh, we, had uh, we say, you might have finishing sixth class in primary school, you might have 90 kids at one stage, uh, whereas the secondary school would only be in a position to facilitate 40 or 50 of them. Right? So, by God, it was a serious tension then, who went, who didn't go, and all the rest of it. But uh, yeah, no, there's been great relations between primary and secondary. Uh, I mean, there's Scott, Kayla, Warren, Nadini, both, both uh, a successful secondary school depends on a successful primary school, and the successful yeah. primary school depends on a successful secondary school. So, relations have been very good in, in recent years, and both have, have done well out of it. Yeah. Certainly, my, my experience there is that the relationship is, is fantastic between the two. Um, yeah. But then Joey is very privileged to have such proactive teachers within the whole organisation as well too, which helps. Yeah, well, the, the success of any school depends on, on the input of teachers. I mean, over the years, we, we, Joey's a, both primary and secondary is unusual in that uh, there isn't a huge catchment area around the actual school itself. So both schools have to attract students from beyond the normal boundaries. So you do that by providing a, a vibrant, uh, active uh, different school that's offering something extra extracurricular or within the curriculum itself like the like the P Tech in the secondary school at the moment. So you must offer something different and something else. And that depends on on teachers being willing to make that input and to give go the extra mile to give the extra shilling to get it there. And we've been looking in primary and secondary over the years that we have had that on the sports field in drama and music uh, now in, in, the, in the IT field, computer field. So yeah. And another first for Joey's P Tech. What are your thoughts on P Tech? I have to know. I don't know an awful lot about it. To be honest with <laughs> okay, you, okay. So all I hear, all I hear about it is, is, is good news, is, is groundbreaking stuff, and, and, and cutting edge technology and that. And it's great to see the old school uh, at at the forefront of that. Yes. Uh, yeah. One of these days, I drop in. And you can educate me on what actually is involved. I'm not very high tech now, but uh, well, I have to say, I've spent a few classes in there and watched the kids utilizing and using the tools that P-TECH provide to learn your standard maths, etc., arithmetic and all the, everything else. And their engagement is fascinating, really is fascinating. Uh, we have some videos. Actually, we'll post them up over the, the, the next few days, um, videos we posted before of the kids engaging. But you'll see that they're learning, they're learning all of the things you learn in a maths class, which all of us fell asleep in. <laughs> but you'll learn them in P-TECH in a different way. And the engagement, you just... Just the excitement in the class is fantastic, you know. Of course, we all like Lego, and Lego is a big part of this as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. Very so good. definitely, if you're coming down, I'll be there the day, and we'll 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 head into the classrooms. We can play Lego together, on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then, you when you came to retirement, um, you made a brave decision. Obviously, you've been going out to Zambia when you were a teacher. Well, the Zambian story started long before my retirement. Um, as as principal in Joey's uh, Christian Brothers School, the Christian Brothers invited various principals and chairpersons to the boards of management to come and visit their their activities in, in Zambia. Uh, I think it was around about two thousand and 
three i got a letter because that's probably three email days i'd say i got a letter from the brother saying here who'd like to come and see our operations in Lusaka, in zambia uh at first i said no so i didn't go uh, the, uh, they wrote to me a second time i said oh come on so i thought that could all right it sounds like a holiday i can do holidays in africa sounds good like you know uh, lions and whatever elephants and that sort of stuff i'll go and have a look see at what's out there so i uh, went out to to zambia at easter i think now 2003, 2004, I'm not sure. Went out at Easter there. Uh, coincidentally, I was met off the, off the plane by a Christian brother who had taught me in Mount Sinai in the 1960s. So that was a good opener. Uh, within an hour or two of getting off the plane, we were uh, in schools, hospices, orphanages. We spent the first day looking around and any thoughts of a holiday or lions and elephants was out the window. It was pure in your face and it was... Uh, quite literally uh, life changing it changed me as a person it changed uh, my attitude to life uh, it was just phenomenal so i spent two weeks there with the brothers looking at the at the wonderful work they were doing there uh, at the end of it then of course they do precisely what they were doing the bad so and so's because at the end of the fortnight they said right now who would um, who'd like to lend a hand or get involved or get stuck in so gobshed here says put me down for a bit of that as well so he said okay there's an irish lady in a place called cabway it's about 150 kilometers northeast of lusaka they said there's an irish lady up there she's pushing on a bit in years and she is running about five or six serious projects up there maybe you'd like to go up there have a word with her and see what you know might come of it so went up to cabway there met up with the, the lady the irish lady mary o'brien was there maiden name she married chichi she married a, an englishman there so she had gone to zambia in the 1960s as a nurse much the same way as uh, irish people go to dubai today for a good time and good salaries and all the rest of it uh, when the zambian economy collapsed and uh, aids came she stayed on there and started helping out she founded a hospice uh, a center for street kids uh, and a medical program into the bush and all the rest of it went up to her uh, I said, here I am, ready to help. You just point me in the right direction. So we started off a great partnership there. I came back to Ireland, uh, went to the staff and Joey's family first, and then staff and said, listen, I'm going to tell you all about this. Probably bore the arses off everybody telling them all about it. So uh, some of the staff in the school wrote in, my wife and family wrote in here. I went to the secondary school and met uh, some uh, wonderful people over there. Christy Unan, probably a lot of your 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 listeners, our viewers there remember Christy. Uh, Christy, Barbara Farrell, a few more people over there said, listen, here's, a, here's a, something we can all row behind, a project at the other end of the world, very deserving. So I said, but don't take my word for it. Uh, why don't you come and see? So I had gone at Easter the following October, a couple of teachers from the secondary school, a couple of teachers from primary school, a couple of friends came out to Zambia. They saw what I had seen and they were equally bowled over and we all got together and we found a little organization we call it now zanda okay yes. so zanda ireland.com for anybody who zanda wants Ireland. to find out more sorry dot org uh we 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 founded our organization and then we started fundraising and taking groups uh adult groups and transition year groups from the secondary school out to zambia do a little bit of work lend a hand that was part of it a bigger part of it probably was to let the people see what's there and change perceptions, change attitudes. And it has been an extraordinary success. When we were started off first, the, we were, um, I should have said, of course, that Mary, the lady running it all, as I say, her year, advancing in years a little bit, and she decided to retire. So when she decided to retire, we decided to take over. <laughs> so it was a big chunk of, but well, we did that. It's been a great success. We and started, the takeover, was that the, was that the retirement part of it? That was when, was that happening at the same time? Uh, correct. Yeah, well, we took over a little bit before that. Uh, we were out with a group uh, from, from Joey's and uh, Mary, uh, no, she, she was leaving. She had to come home. She was pushing on. And one of our teachers with us from, from Joey's said, uh, here, we can't let this collapse. I'll stay here. So, yeah, she stayed for four years, uh, ran, the, ran the operations there. Then he was getting a little tired too, as well. It does take its toll. So his getting tired and saying, I'm looking to come back to Ireland now, coincide with, with my retirement in Joey's. So that was oh, 2013. So he was retiring uh, and I was retiring. So it was a perfect match, I suppose. So my wife and I said, right, well, we've been ticking away at this for the last couple of years. Uh, 
let's do it properly, let's go out and give it go at full time. So that's where we've been for the last number of years, running it full time. The place is booming and uh, growing. We have, we're dealing with the, the poorest of the poor, some of the most poverty stricken kids on the planet. We're dealing with street children. We're also dealing with uh, orphans and what they call them, Zambia, double orphans. In other words, a real orphan uh, from compounds of Makalulu, which is appalling place. Uh, I just couldn't, uh, uh, yeah, you'd have to take hours to describe the poverty mm. and uh, the desolation there. However, we have now grown our project. We have 381 kids in our place called Sables Newa in the town of Cab. We also have two satellite projects in the bush, uh, Kangomba and Chilea. So 381 kids in, in Cabway and probably several hundred others uh, outside Cabway as well. So we feed them, we clothe them, we medically treat them, we educate them. We started off as a very basic primary school. We've now moved on to a, we have a half built secondary school. Uh, and we're, we're raising funds to finish that off. And we also have a trickle of kids in third level. We, two doing medicine, two doing science. And so oh, that's these fantastic. Are, these are kids who had absolutely nothing. I, we're talking yeah. about kids who are living in, a, living in a mud hut that would be the size of your bathroom, uh, living there with maybe two grandparents uh, and maybe 10 kids, uh, eating once a day, if at all, uh, wearing the clothes that we give them. So now if it sounds doom and gloom, it's absolutely not. So ask all the transition years who've been out with us. Ask all the teachers at the secondary school and primary school who've been out with us. It's actually a haven. It's an oasis. It's a place of happiness and light and buzz. If you want to check us out on our Facebook page, you can scroll down to it. There is Zamda Ireland. Uh, or check out the website. The website isn't hectic, but it'll give you some idea anyway. Mm. But if anyone wants to talk about it, I can talk forever about Sam, but there's no problem. <laughs> but it, 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 uh, you, you, I read one of your articles there about um, Teacher's Day, which is celebrated in... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it sounds fantastic. You know, you're coming to a country with, that has very few resources, yet they're partying up and down the streets. And what I found really interesting in your story was the fact that the same kind of slagging between teachers and students went on there as does in Ireland. Yeah, it is, it is worldwide, yeah. <laughs> so in, in, in educating, is there any difference really between the edu how you educate there and how you educate it here? One very, very serious difference, and it sounds strange, is that there is no discipline problems of any sort whatsoever because wow. every single kid desperately wants to be in school, now, which we can't say here, even with the best will in the world. Absolutely. Every is desperate for education because even those kids who have, very, who have nothing, uh, realize that if there is to be a way out of the gutter, if there is to be a way of progress, it has to be through education and they want to be in there. Now, they have been let down a little bit by, by or let down a little bit by some schools out there, the, the standard wouldn't be great, but we are working on building the standard up and our aim is to give the, the, the poorest of the poor children, the weakest of the children, to give them an education that would normally in Zambia be reserved for the very well off. So we're taking kids who have nothing, giving them the opportunities. If they seize the opportunities, great. So we're, work, we're working on that and, and it's working very well. But the kids there, the biggest difference is the kids really want to be in school. They That's fantastic. School, you know? Now, part of it, of course, is we feed them in school as well. And yes. they don't have food, but so be it. But they, they genuinely do want education. Yeah. That's the biggest difference. And, and they take to education the same way as Irish kids take to education, I would presume? Yes. The curriculum uh, is, is a very... Uh, Oh, it's a very formal kind of a curriculum. It would be very similar to Ireland in the 50s and 60s. Uh, it would be very book-based um, examination questions. Would be, uh, there would be very little collaborative learning or whatever. It's a very old-fashioned type of curriculum. It's a very solid body of work. The curriculum itself is very sound. The content is very sound, but it's a very rigid curriculum. You wouldn't find P-Tech there now, for instance. Right, right? And, and is that because there's no culture of education in the family. Is that the reason that they, it's so strict? Uh, they're, they're, they're de well, well, in our kids, there's definitely no culture of education. Mm. Uh, I would say of our 381 kids, I doubt if 10% of the parents had ever been to any sort of school. Yeah. Right. So it, it is that, but they, they, a part of it is this, 
it's a very exam-focused system, okay? They have uh, an examination at grade seven, which is the equivalent of the Irish primary cert that existed up to 1967 or 68. So they have an exam then grade nine, which is equivalent of the Irish junior cert or intermediate cert it was, and then the leaving cert would be the equivalent of grade 12. So everything in the whole country is focused on those examinations with a vengeance, right? And kids are desperate to get the points in those examinations. And teachers are desperate to make sure the kids get those points in those examinations. So that gives no scope for straying off task. They're straight down the middle, curriculum, curriculum, curriculum. Uh, the whole country is focused on that. So there, there's no possibility of escaping. Right, right. yes. If you're yeah. your college, you must have your points in the leaving cert here. But out there, it's even worse. You must have your points in your grade 12, desperately. And then the, 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 your, your successes that have gone on to third level, mm. how have they, is there a grant aid for them within Zambia? Or, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I understand oh. the economics of Zambia is a very tricky area. Yeah, there is nothing available. There are no yeah. grants whatsoever. Nothing. So anything, any kids that go on to college are funded. We, for instance, would be the only free school in Cabway, probably the only free school in Zambia. All schools charge fees, all schools, right? Uh, even the the worst of the schools you want are charging fees. They might be very small in our way of thinking, but if you have nothing, even a small fee, it yes. is just yeah. So that was our raison d'etre was to provide a totally free education. Um, we provide the uniforms, we provide the food, we provide the pens and pencils, the copy books, you name it, the computer studies that we have now, all the rest of it. We provide all that um, and free. But I say that that is unique, unique. Um, if it works out, it works out. But we'll give it the opportunity to the kids, yeah. And you're back home at the moment. Um, I noticed that you're collecting a lot of goods from... Yeah. Uh, right, well, we, we Truckloads, have... it seemed, of desks, old old desks um, from... Quite which look fantastic. Quite literally truckloads. You see, we have, we have groups come out. We started off... We, we do an adult group every Easter to come and visit us. We do a transition year group uh, every June. Uh, Joys were due to be out with us last month, uh, obviously. That's right, yes. And the kids were so keen that we have a video, which we'll also post this week, yeah. of one of our students, which we did for the annual dinner, explaining how keen and how interested he was in going and the, and the right. challenge that he had in terms of raising the money to go, but he felt it would really expand himself. So there's a lot of very disappointed kids, that, unfortunately, with COVID. I should mention two great teachers running that too, the two Kiras as they're known. Yes, the two Kiras, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, yeah, um, the groups come out to us and we usually fly Ethiopian. They fly into Zambia because Ethiopian give every passenger 46 kilos of luggage allowance plus oh, their right, 10 okay. kilos to carry on. So the rule we have with our visitors is the 10 kilos you carry on, that's yours. The 46 kilos you carry on, that's ours. Right? So uh, the, 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 the the, the visitors will pack up uh, their bags with 46 kilos of school materials, of clothing, of medical supplies, of toiletries, of toys, of you name it. And when they get there, they're ours. Now, over the years, we have become dependent on the groups coming. So we have Joey's is a, is a big one and the adult ones. We also have Wexford CBS are in our, our group as well. We've had Kalosh de Wira, our first long grail trip out as well. And we have St. Vincent's and Sutton, they be our big ones. So all the groups come to bring us in mountains of supplies and we've become dependent on it. But COVID has put paid to visitors for 2020 and quite possibly, I'd say for 2021 as well, mm. being, being realistic about it. So we have a, a deficit there. So while we're here in Ireland, lockdown in Ireland, we said, okay, let's get a container together and let's ship a container out to Zambia. An awful lot more complicated than I thought it was, let me tell you, between customs and excess and tariffs and all the rest of it. But for the last uh, couple of weeks since the re travel restrictions ended, we've been traveling the country and people have been coming to us and bringing this material. So we started off with a 20 foot container, which is now gone by the board. It's a 40 foot container. It looks like we're going to have to put a 20 foot together with the 40. That. So we're shipping out. Sewing machines, for instance, we have about 12 sewing machines. We have a skills training group. I should have mentioned, like, we, we, we have the school, but we also have a skills training element as well for the kids, maybe who are not too academically inclined. So we have tailoring. We have well, that's uh, your, your version of P Tech, exactly. <laughs> a bit, bit down market, maybe, but it exists. All right, yeah, no Lego one involved. Uh, we have a uh, skills training and tailoring. We have uh, a very serious catering school, uh, teaching kids. Uh, 
very high high end catering, which is unusual out there. Uh, we have woodwork, metalwork, and all that. So we collect all the tools for that. We've collected mountains of good quality clothing. We have school supplies, school materials, wall charts, maps. We have a couple of computers. We're always open to some more. We're looking for a data projector, by the way. If any of your listeners out there, uh, okay, a data projector. We put that out. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what type? What type of computers? Well, any computer, like any computer, it... well, number, uh, number one, they have to be working. Right? Yeah, just once they're working, send us something that oh, that needs a new bleeding hard drive or a, whatever, a new motherboard or whatever. Uh, so we're gathering all those materials. Uh, we've done very, very well so far, and hopefully the computer will uh, will head off, or sorry, the container will head off. Uh, hopefully, in the next uh, two or three weeks. Um, it takes about two months to get there, but I'll be there to welcome it as it arrives and uh, share out the goodies. Yeah. So when are you heading back? As soon as possible. Right. Uh, at the moment in Zambia, there is a mandatory uh, lockdown or lockup when you get there. Um, mandatory uh, into a government facility for two weeks. Okay. Which isn't the most pleasant of places, so I have no intention of spending two weeks as a guest of a, the government for the moment. Uh, also then... Um, the, the, the big bang of COVID has not happened in Zambia that was expected. That was my next question. How is it affecting Zambia itself? Uh, there's been a, it, it started recently. Okay. okay, I'm not sure how much testing is going on. Mm. The, group, the, the figures at the moment say there's about 120 deaths and about 2,000 cases in a country of 80 million, which is quite small. Right? How much testing is going on? Who knows? Yes. Uh, but I, I, I fear the worst is yet to come. I hope not, but I fear the worst is yet to come. However, I hope to get back out in the next uh, month or two anyway and uh, get ramp up things again. The schools are closed at the moment, uh, apart from examination classes. The examination classes, as I said, examinations are all important. So they're still in schools all over Zambia, but the rest are closed. So we get back out and we get stuck in and we get going again. And if any of your uh, viewers there want to come and join us, that's something to make. Well, certainly we are, we're, we're, we'll put out the call for computers because any of the calls here for computers are usually that they have to be Chromebooks or they have to be specific. <laughs> but it, um, that's not the case there. So um, I'm just looking around here. I can see a few that we'll certainly send down to you. And um, so I'll chat to you later about organizing a, a, a number or a location that they can be dropped into, maybe into the school. Um, it depends on what uh, how, how things are organised with with COVID at the moment. So we can we can do that. We put a call out for a projector, and uh, and anything else that anybody else has to help with the for the the guys who really need it in uh, in Zambia. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. Listen, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, you. We've gone a little bit. I intended that we we go for twenty minutes, but we've gone on for half an hour. And I hope our viewers have enjoyed it. And um, thank you very much for being our first guest on Joey's in conversation. And we wish you all the very best of luck um, in everything that you're doing. Very good. Thanks a lot. That's brilliant. Great stuff. We'll thank do. you. Slot. Slot.